So, finally, Sunset Overdrive. This is a game that I've been waiting for since E3 2013. It was actually, somebody mentioned this to us a few months back and I couldn't even remember what it was. <laughs> and that's kind of shameful considering how much uh, at the time I was actually talking about this game and how cool it actually was. That was that was a bit weird, but after getting my hands on it, it starts off pretty goddamn weird, to be honest. With the whole in the videos for this, this the character in the videos you can actually well you're not really playing as that character, but you can have them look the same. And oh, it was just so weird being that person who has no idea what to do because the one in the video was a badass, and this guy is trying to get home and having issues with it. But then you get there, this bulldozer thing turns up and basically you start running away from it. Because all you've got is a weapon. Um, how are we That's shit as well. God damn it. That's basically, it's just like a shotgun. But most of the weapons in this are pretty damn cool anyway. And most of them you're supposed to be able to put overcharge into to soup them up and you have some pretty decent weaponry. But eventually you'll get inside and you can get the the customization thing continues. You have the customization that you start the game with here and you can create the character for everything from different hairstyles there's lots of different hairstyles to be honest. Then you can choose the colour of those hairstyles for different parts of the hair, which I thought was pretty weird. Then you can add facial hair. You can't change the costume yet. Then it gets even weirder, because once you finally get in here, it does this. It plays a weird video about 17 hours earlier. Where you basically say the the have a party, celebrate the the launch of this uh, soft drink, because the overdrive itself was a basically an energy drink that turned everybody into I don't know what you would call these enemies to be honest. They call them the OD people who've overdosed on overdrive. But after this. You can finally go in and actually change your clothes, because up until this point you've been set on the same clothes. The day one thing did come with this weird get up, which I did choose after having a quick look through, but I kind of regret that now because I haven't found where I go to actually take this off and put it on normal stuff. Because when they're talking, you can actually see the mouths moving with the helmet on it kind of ruin that. Then you can finally get into some gameplay after this guy comes in and actually saves your ass again. And from here on it basically just introduces you to the the elements of the game, the gunfire, uh, grinding. This is a game that is, it's literally non-stop as soon as you start playing it. You can't just take a second to stand on the floor because you'll die. The only problem I had was the tutorial thing. You, it was weird but you meant to melee and I took a lot of damage and spent the rest of it flashing red because it didn't give any health. There should have been a health thing after you meant to melee the, the people. But there wasn't. That was a tiny bit weird. And the screen's flashing and it's got a beeping and ah. Uh, but you introduced to some new characters, there is a gun store and then there's the the scientist guy, Floyd. He does the the amps. This is you've got to basically go out, you collect um, neon signs, <laughs> shoes on the power lines, uh, throw on toilet paper where people have been TPing places, and floating balloons of the the companies mascot if you will. You then take this stuff to him and he'll make you amps and the amps are basically 
what you need to how would you, what's the best way to put this uh, survive <laughs> uh, you can add elemental stuff to weaponry because there is one of the amps that you'll get pretty early on that will give you one of them will do the first one will do stun but then you'll get fire it is actually recommended that you swap that pretty early for what is it, bear force I think it is it basically adds like fire to it because the stun doesn't really do much damage. The weaponry you start off with didn't really do that much damage, but it's that and the, the roll. And to build up your amps to be able to actually use these, you've got to do combos. That is the grinding, jumping, kills in between, and basically just keep moving. The combos will go up, and that builds your amp. And once you've got, I think it's, it goes up like four levels, and once you're there, it just stays there until you actually slow down. And while it's at max, all of the amps are working. Because certain ones will activate at one, certain ones at two, some at three, and then some at explanation points. It's all explained in the actual game, but it was weird because the guy was talking, but the sound effects of the game were actually louder than the audio, so. He literally says at amp level 3 and then the guy screams while he's telling you like the character screams while the guy's telling you how to do it and what it does and you can't hear him. <laughs> so no idea what 3 and 4 do. Which is again that's probably just down to turning the game sound effects down a little. Because the rest of the town the will find it's just that one point and it's a little bit weird. Then eventually you'll do that, you'll get it, that's when basically you're thrown into general gameplay and oh my god the free roam on this game is huge. And I mean properly huge. There is different parts. I mean there's an entire city well the map itself speaks for itself. The travel time between them is it's not long enough that you would require a vehicle to get there, but it's just long enough to keep it interesting going between certain points. And I think that is... It was, it's a nice touch to have a huge free roaming thing where you've basically got to stay on the rooftops but moving at the same time. And there is there is a safe zone where Floyd is. There's probably more than the one. But in between the two, you basically can't stop. Hopefully the weapons will get better. I did have a tiny bit of a... I don't want to say argument, but I had a nice discussion with the people in the store that I actually picked this up from because... You got the day one stuff, but if you pre-ordered it, you got a, a different costume and a weapon. And the weapon was an actual weapon, not a thing that throws LPs at people. Because the LP one, well, I heard it wasn't doing that much damage, and the other weapon was actually better. And I said, well, where's my quote for this other weapon? And turns out, because I bought this with a, an Xbox and not just the game, I wasn't entitled to it. So spending more money entitles you to let there was actually other issues with that but that was the game's the store's fault not the game's fault the game itself was still is a hell of a lot of fun there's challenges throughout it there's different things on the map there's people you've got to try and save they're in cages there's survivors who will actually try and kill you just for the hell of it and as you go on, I am hoping that certain things will get better. I think you'd be able to jump a little bit higher with a jump amp. I mean, it's been out for like three days uh, in the States. It is finally nice to actually be able to play on these games constantly because after a few issues, I actually have a working Xbox One now. So we'll probably be doing a lot more. I will definitely be playing the hell out of this. 
because games like this I do like. Uh, Grand Theft Auto, I mainly play that because it's a giant open world game. There is a lot of other games that have open worlds that weren't as fun, but just the fact that you can't stop when going from point A to point B in this game because of the zombies. The zombies. I keep saying zombies. <laughs> they're not really zombies, they're mutated people. Because, well, zombies are the living dead. Nothing in this has actually said that people are dead. They have just mutated. And the different mutations are pretty cool, actually. You've got the flying one that we see very early in the game. Then you have the the digger thing which also appears very early in the game not to mention the fact that later on which I haven't got to yet so don't have clips of unfortunately you're apparently gonna come into robots that try and kill you as well not to mention the humans that are trying to kill you so it's literally everything is trying to kill you in this game so you cannot stop moving and that is going to make this game it's going to add a hell of a lot of replayability to the game because obviously going from point A to point B is not going to be the same because each time something else is going to be there there's going to be more enemies, less enemies, possibly no enemies a boss could uh, appear there and it's got that uh, horde mode when you're trying to build the amps which was a really nice touch and of course there is multiplayer and co-op to this as well so there does seem to be a lot of replayability to this game so I'm looking forward to playing a lot more of this. And if you would like to see more of this game uh, leave a comment in the comment section below and we might actually end up streaming some of this if I can get my PVR to actually talk to it. Because I don't personally like the way that the Xbox streams because it doesn't pick up the audio correctly. But that's besides the fact. But for now, we're going to leave this off here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.